To really get the most out of your repurposed content, it pays to have tried and tested systems and processes in place that you stick to each and every time. Listen on to hear my tips and tricks for creating and implementing them and why I always say that systems and processes in content repurposing help you to repeat success and avoid failure. You're listening to the Content 10X podcast, where it's all about content repurposing. I'm Amy Woods, and I'm here to help you maximize your content and find smart ways to get your message in front of more of the right people, whilst also saving time. Let's get started. Hello and welcome back to the Content 10X podcast. I'm Amy Woods, the founder and CEO of Content 10X and the Content 10X podcast is all about content repurposing. In this episode, I'm going to explain why I believe developing clear systems and processes is key to successful content repurposing. Now, before I get to the main content, just to mention that we're so excited to have launched the Content 10X Repurposing Effectiveness Scorecard. If you want to find out how your content repurposing strategy and efforts compare to others and get specific tips and advice on how to improve, then what are you waiting for? It's free, it's quick fire, it takes less than three minutes. Just head to content10x.com forward slash scorecard and see how you get on. Okay, so back to systems and processes. Now they play a huge part in the success of any business. I really like the saying by former Indian president APJ Abdul Kalam, Excellence is a continuous process and not an accident. I completely agree with this. And I guess that mindset around process is why I decided to make it the topic of this episode. So I'm going to cover why it's so important to have systems and processes in place for content repurposing, how to implement those systems and processes effectively, the software that can help you along the way, and why updating your processes is so, so important. Now, I am a very systematic and process-driven person. Before starting Content 10X in 2017, I was a management consultant for over a decade. And that was basically all about helping businesses improve by identifying issues in their existing systems and processes and fixing them or setting up brand new processes. Now, I really, really enjoyed that part of my career and it's pretty much what attracted me to content repurposing in some ways because I loved the whole idea of making something go so much further and making the most of things, which is what repurposing is. That's always been a big passion of mine, but I also saw the opportunity for repurposing to be very systematic and process driven too. So I saw it as a wonderful balance of creativity and processes. So with that background, I'm sure you can understand why I'm such a firm believer in systems and processes. And in this episode, I'm going to cover three reasons why creating and sticking to them is a surefire way to find success with your content repurposing. Okay, so reason number one, consistency. So sticking to your systems and processes leads to consistency. We have plans in place to cover every aspect of what we do at Content 10X from social copy to podcast editing and production to video editing to publishing. And these plans and these systems and processes cover our own content, but very importantly, cover that of each and every client that we work with. And this is really crucial for a few reasons. So just looking at us and the systems and process we have for our content. So firstly, our audience knows what to expect. We produce a weekly podcast episode and our audience, so you listening right now, generally know that you'll hear this weekly podcast. You'll be able to find the podcast on all the podcasting apps that it goes out to every week and on our website. You'll see the social media post. You'll know that you can read a blog post about it too. 
Keeping a structure like that is so much easier for you to maintain, but it's easier for your audience to follow as well. And it's not just your audience that value consistency, but platform algorithms also value consistency. Now we should create for humans, not algorithms, but it's important to know how they work and they really do value consistency in content creation and publishing. And I'm a big fan of episodic content for this reason. Now you can find out more about why this is a good idea in an episode I did a while back called seven reasons why you should create episodic content. I expand on what I've just been talking about in much more detail. So head to content10x.com forward slash 171 to read or listen to that one. But that's number one, systems and processes help you to be consistent, which helps you as a business and a team and it helps your audience and it helps the algorithms too. Number two, systems and processes help you to repeat success and avoid failure. So not only do systems and processes allow you to build momentum and in turn success, but they also highlight your failures and ensure you can jump on them quickly. So if you document a process when things go well and you follow that process again, you have a better chance of repeating that success. But also if you analyze a process when something goes wrong and things always will go wrong from time to time and make sure that you then change the process appropriately. So you look at what step caused that thing to go wrong and you make a change, then you are preventing that same thing from going wrong again. So processes help you to repeat success and avoid failure. And we should all strive for that. And number three, why it's great to have systems and processes, it's easier to have your team's input and train new starters. Having clear processes in place makes it easier to work together as a team. As mentioned earlier at Content 10X, we have many different systems in place, including software and the general in-house processes we adhere to on a daily basis, including our content plans, even things like our graphic templates. All our content follows these processes. So it's easy for people across our agency to understand what everybody else is doing and what is required of them and when. It really does make things so much easier than having a higgledy-piggledy way of creating content, which is when balls get dropped and mistakes are made. But when people are new to the business or new to the team, so you hire someone new to work with, a clear onboarding process really helps new starters understand what you do and helps them come up to speed very quickly. So when they're introduced to the systems and processes, it's easier to develop training and it's easier for them to then hit the ground running. And one thing I always like to highlight is that having a clear system makes it easier to outsource or collaborate with others as well. So not necessarily hiring in-house, but when you work with other people, other businesses, other agencies as well. So when our clients have systems and processes in place, it makes it simpler for us to come alongside and seamlessly take on their content repurposing. Everything just runs smoothly. Huge credit to my team for keeping all that going. But then if clients don't have systems and processes in place then they can be sure that they soon will when working with us because we'll set them up and run with them because that's how we work now that's three reasons why it's great to have a systems and processes let's move on to the how side of things so how can we implement these systems and processes in our content repurposing firstly writing SOPs is very important in my eyes. So standard operating procedures, they're step-by-step guides on what to do and you can create them for anything. For example, if you're repurposing your weekly video series, you can have an SOP explaining how to repurpose the video into a blog post, another SOP on how to repurpose the video into YouTube shorts or TikTok videos or whatever it is. So you can create big, huge SOPs that cover lots of different processes, or you could have, you know, a multitude of individual SOPs that break things down a little bit more, whatever works best for you. 
You can create SOPs as Word documents or Google documents for any stage of a process, whether it's planning stage or publishing, whatever it may be. And there are SOP writing tools or software if you want to get really fancy. So we tend to have all our SOPs as Google Docs, but you know there are different softwares out there just for writing standard operating procedures. And talking about software, it's great to have software that may makes your processes and systems easy to follow. So project management tools like Trello, Basecamp, Asana, Monday and ClickUp are really, really helpful and make things a lot more streamlined and help to avoid any disasters if you're a busy agency like ours. ClickUp is so useful for us at Content 10X. That's our chosen software for project management. It keeps the whole business functioning like clockwork. We love ClickUp. But if you're looking for something simpler, then maybe Trello would be a good option. So if you just want some software to track the processes for your content repurposing, then consider Trello. We used Trello for years before we outgrew it and moved on to ClickUp, but I still think it's really, really good. Now, before I finish, I just want to highlight the importance of evolving those systems and processes as you and your business grow and change. So it's important to remember that while something works well right now, that won't always be the case. We change our SOPs all the time. Say if we look at our metrics and something's not working particularly well or working better than expected, we go and change our SOPs and plans to reflect that. Now, part four of my book, Content 10X, More Content, Less Time, Maximum Results, has a section on this, actually chapters 21 to 26. So if you don't have a copy of my book yet, then head on over to content10x.com forward slash book. You can find it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble if you want to dig deeper and have a read of those chapters. But my key point is you need to become a process driven organization. Process needs to be a part of your culture and you need to always consider the knock on impact of processes when you change things up. So let's say you're in a meeting and you agree to change something and you should immediately say, okay, what SOPs and processes do we need to go and update as a result of us just agreeing that change? So you just always need to be thinking in that way. What's the knock on impact? What processes do we need to change? Because we've documented everything in SOPs and processes and they need to always evolve and always stay up to date. Okay, so that's a wrap. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you want help putting a system in place for your content repurposing, or if you already have one and just need the repurposing work done for you, then we can help. We offer a fully done for you content repurposing service for video and audio content. So head on over to content10x.com to find out more. Make sure to follow us on social media as well. Just search Content 10X on all the social media platforms or you can find me, Amy Woods, on LinkedIn. Go connect with me and let me know that you listen to the podcast. That would be fantastic. All of the links mentioned in this episode are mentioned in the show notes as well. So do check out the show notes and you'll be able to click on all the links to anything I've mentioned. So all that's left to say is thank you so, so much for listening to this podcast episode. I hope you found it really useful. I hope you're going to go and look at your content repurposing systems and processes and see if there's anything that you can change or improve or maybe start doing for the first time. So let me know how you get on. And all that's left to say is I'll catch you in the next episode.